Hiya, I'm Jasper, and welcome to your video review for Bosch Legacy Season 2. It's a TV show starring the guy who plays Bosch, the guy who plays his daughter, and the guy who plays the lawyer Money slash Honey Chandler, and also Bo Masani, Mas Messi, anywho, the, the hacker guy. So, uh, this show is excellent, as always. If you've tuned in to the first, what, seven seasons of Bosch, that was excellent. If you liked the first season of Bosch Legacy, you will like this season. I really like how they don't, this show does not feel rushed or contrived where they're just trying to force, we're like, ah, oh, we got four episodes and we only got two hours and we got to shove these storylines and these horrible, like ridiculous coincidences together to make them work. And it also doesn't feel like, ah, oh, we have 10 episodes and three episodes worth of content, so we have to just languish this out and add bullshit that nobody cares about and blah, 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 blah. No. <laughs> this show is ten episodes long, and it is the exact right length for taking care of this season's things. So the, the cases that come along, the complications that come along, um, you know, consequences and how those all interact, they... They, they are complicated and they weave together, but it's not in a confusing way. So, especially with a show like this where there's no superpowers, there's not like, oh, this gold area is where this is happening, this blue tinted area is where this is happening. No, it's just all L.A., but they do a really good job of establishing where you're at, what case is working on, and how they do interact or don't interact. And really, the only complaint that I have about this season was that the end of last season ended on a cliffhanger and it was just like, oh man, what's going to happen there? I feel like that cliffhanger was des was designed for like, hey, if Maddie doesn't want to come back, or suddenly, <laughs> if her actor or actress, whatever, uh, wants to, you know, wants more money, then much like with some of the other, <laughs> like the rookie or whatever, we'll just have them killed off screen between seasons, and we just won't bring them back. Maybe her contract was already for three seasons, and I'm just, you know, projecting, whatever. I don't know. But it really seemed like so that was a cliffhanger for season one, and they solve, put a nice little bow, put that bow, put a nice wrap around that bow, and a beautiful bow, and wrap that up and throw that away, never to think about it again after just one episode. So on the one hand, I appreciate that the thing that doesn't matter for this season, they wrapped up and blah 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 over in one episode, as opposed to like trying to stretch it out for three or four and then introduce something else. But at the same time, uh, it's just kind of like you could have just you could have finished that out in the first in the first season and left this season up for other things, but I also get the need to have like a cliffhanger to get people to want to tune in to see what happens. And in this one, this episode, I don't think that it's, or sorry, this season, it's not quite a cliffhanger ending. It's not definitely not nearly as much of a cliffhanger ending as that one, but I could definitely see things go in a couple different ways. And yeah, so it was a fun time and I like how they make it believable in today's day and age for the things that were happening and the moves that people were making. So it's a lot of fun. If you didn't like the first few seasons, you're not going to like this season, but I definitely liked it all. So same quality, excellent writing, excellent acting. Good job. That's all I have for this one. Thanks for coming. Bye.